Hello everyone, my name is Natalia, I'm a psychology counseling and therapy student and today I will be doing a self-inflating balloon experiment to celebrate British Science Week. So for this experiment you're going to need a baking soda, vinegar, um, balloon and a plastic bottle. So what you're going to do is you're going to pour some of the vinegar into the bottle not too much, maybe just like one cup of vinegar. And then you're gonna put about two teaspoons of baking soda into the balloon. I already put some into mine. So we gotta place it over the lid of the bottle. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna slowly pour our baking soda into the bottle with vinegar and we're going to see what happens once these two ingredients get into contact so let's do it yay can you see the bubbles all right so what happened there is once these two ingredients, so baking soda and vinegar, get into contact, um, it causes a chemical reaction and carbon dioxide gas is being produced, which makes the balloon inflate. How cool is that? <laughs> Hi, I'm Esme. I'm seven years old and I'm going to be your mini scientist. For this experiment, you will need Vicarin, four cups of water and three pieces of tissue. Now I'm going to do food colouring in the cups of water. Now we have to put the tissue between each cup and let's see if there's chemical reaction. Fold them up. Hi guys, this is the bread mould experiment where we are going to be having different preservatives and then placing them on a bread and we're going to see um, if they grow mould and if they do, how much mould compared to each other. So let's start over here. First things first, we've got six preservatives, so we need at least six pieces of bread. Over here, we've got nothing and we have a whole slice of bread. Because it says nothing, we don't need to put anything on the bread. You just simply place the bread in the bag. For this experiment, it's ideal if you can label your bag so you know what bread has what preservative on it. Use some sandwich bags and also have a adults with you because you would need a kettle to dissolve the sugar and salt preservatives. I would use about two teaspoons of salt and dissolve it in two tablespoons of water and with the sugar use two teaspoons of sugar and two tablespoons of water to dissolve it. So over here we have our bread with nothing on so I'm going to place it to the side and I've also labelled it nothing. Over here is our bread which is going to have water on it so I have some water here and I'm going to just dab some water around the bread and then I'm going to place it in the bag and place that to one side over here we have our sugar preservative so I'm going to do the same thing and just pour it on the bread It might get messy, so make, make sure your work top is protected or you clean it up afterwards. That was our sugar preservative labelled. 
Same with the salt, I'm just going to pour it on the bread. Luckily my bread is quite thick so I don't have to worry about it leaking through. But I'll make sure I wipe up my surface afterwards. I've done the same things with the oil and the vinegar solutions and I've packed each bread in their own bags and they're all labelled. Now what you have to do is take your breads to a warm location such as a cupboard or anywhere in your house where you think it's really warm and then we're going to check on which bread gets mould and which one gets the most mould. While you're waiting, try and make a prediction, try and make a hypothesis. Which breads do you think will grow mould and which one do you think will have the most mould? And if you want to go further, try and figure out why it has the most mould. So you give this experiment a roughly five days to see um, proper results. What you should see is um, the bread with vinegar should have the least amount of mould because in acidic conditions, they do not allow bacteria to grow. They destroy the bacteria. Uh, because of um, there needs to be the correct pH for bacteria to thrive but anything uh, the sugar solution should have the most uh, because sugar is what promotes bacteria growth so all in all the vinegar should have the least amount of mold and the sugar solution should have the most amount of bacteria but give this experiment a good five days to see results this is what I got after two days this small patch Hi everyone, my name is Ioana, I'm a member of the Access and Outreach team and I'm also a biomedical science student. In honour of the British Science Week, I will be trying an experiment and showing it to you today. The experiment I'll be trying is called the Lava Lamp Experiment. So you use very simple ingredients such as baby oil, food colouring and some painkillers including a bottle with water to turn it into a lava lamp, which is crazy. So to start, I've just grabbed an empty bottle that I had hanging around the house, but you're also free to use an empty glass. I filled it up up to here just because this bottle is quite big. If you're using a glass, you should probably fill it up to two inches or five centimeters. The next step is to grab your baby oil. You could also use vegetable oil for this, but just because vegetable oil has a coloring in it already, I'm using baby oil so our food coloring shows up nicely. Before we put the baby oil in there, Make sure to add a little bit of food colouring in your water. I've chosen blue. You could choose whatever colour you like, but I feel like blue is a really cool lava lamp colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a few, two or three drops to my bottle and just shake it so it goes all over the water and the water is coloured. So I've just put a little bit of food colouring here because it does it, the bottle doesn't do it in drops. And I'm just going to very carefully drop it in there, try not to spill it, and immediately my water's blue. So now we're ready to put our baby oil in or vegetable oil if that's what you wanted to use. Now because we have this amount of water we're gonna do double that so there's enough oil there to create the lava effect. So I, what I have done now is I very carefully and very slowly put the baby oil in that to, and I was very careful not to create any bubbles. So we need the oil to be as clear as possible on top of the water. And notice how the oil is sitting on top of the water because oil and water cannot mix. So the next step is to grab an alka seltzer tablet. These are considered aspirins, but when they mix with water, they actually fizz up. And this is what is going to create the lava effect for this experiment. So I'm gonna grab one of these tablets, break them in half, I put them in one by one so they fit. But if you're using a glass bottle, you can just drop the tablet in. And once it drops, we can start to see the reaction. You can already see it fizzing up and the bubbles are coming up. Look at that. And they're all blue. Look at how they're coming up and they're coming up and down.
my bubbles were not very blue so maybe I should have used a bit more fruit coloring but I'm sure you'll do it fine at home as well well thank you very much for watching I hope you celebrate pretty science week by trying out one of these experiments as well and please remember that if you try this at home make sure you have an adult supervising you for help